Are you still living in a dirt hut? Not you again. How would you like to live in a luxurious Roman villa? Does Cato hate Carthage? Well, then do I have a deal for you. This fine Roman villa can be yours for the low price of 24 diamond blocks. I don't know why you still think I have even a single diamond. Oh, well, in that case, you'll have to watch another tutorial video. I can do that. Hello, my name is Tridar. Today I'm going to be showing you how to build a Roman villa in Minecraft. Let's get started. So firstly, let us take a tour of our Roman villa. Of course, we have a grand entranceway here at the front of your villa with formal gardens on either side of the pathway leading into it. We have a couple of Roman soldier statues here and the entranceway to the interior courtyard of your villa is, of course, Flanked by a nice colonnade and some trees, a Roman triumphal arch here, a small one, and a Roman imperial eagle statue on the top of that. So, if we head a little bit deeper into our villa here, we have our inner courtyard with our fine uh, Corinthian pediment here, a little facade for the front here. We have some more gardens on the interior here and a wing on either side of the villa with a couple of rooms in that and if we um i think let's take a tour through the inside first then we'll go to the outside so if we go in the front door here this will take you into the main entrance hall of the villa as you can see it is a nice sumptuous room here with a grand uh, barrel vault up there with a, a rib vault up there also in uh, four sections. And beneath that, you have a nice diamond throne here for you to sit on and rule over your domain here. Uh, the floor is, of course, done in a mosaic of a blue and, I think, black glazed terracotta. All through the house, we're, we're using various colors of stained terracotta here for to represent the, uh, the fine mosaic floors that of course Roman villas would all have. On the sides here we have uh, walls decorated with uh, in, in pretty much the first style of Roman art. It's, it's very blocky which is uh, useful for us in Minecraft. So we have uh, inlaid panels of fine imperial uh, porphyry quartz there and on the for the columns and the baseboards and everything we have of course fine blocks of cut calcite in here as well, decorated with uh, quartz accents all the way around the room, as you can see done here. Let's take a look at one of the side rooms. So if we head uh, over here, we have a very large room suitable for you to set up a storage system in here, if you so please to do so. Of course, we have uh, various patterns on the floor here as well. In fact, let me just take a, let me just take a potion. So we can see everything fully, fully lit up. It looks a little bit better without the dark and, and gloomy Minecraft lighting. But we have uh, one of these rooms on either side of your main room. So in here, this would correspond to the central room inside the Domus tutorial that I did a while back. But of course, the villa is an entirely different animal than that. The, the rooms don't necessarily have uh, uh, set names for them. They do have uses, though, depending on uh, what, um, what uh, shape and size they are. So uh, you can see for the ceiling here, we have, of course, a fine uh, wooden coffered ceiling up there. And if we head over here, we have uh, a triclinium or a dining room, which would be on either side of this. Sometimes these would have apses on either end, uh, but I have, I have not included an apse uh, on this particular room here, but as you can see, we have uh, different designs for the floors, for the mosaics of all of the rooms. They differ, they differ from each other. If we go through these double doors here, we will find a little, uh, little hallway, and this is going to lead up to the stairs to the upper story, which we'll go to in a minute, but let's take, go through these doors here, and these will lead into one of the smaller rooms on a wing. 
And these would be suitable for something like uh, perhaps an enchanting room or an alchemy setup or something like that, or one of your bedrooms if you so choose to do. Of course, the, the color scheme has changed to a pleasing green color. We have a prismarine on the uh, walls and a green and gray glazed terracotta on the floor in a different pattern. We head out over here, we have another door over here as well, which leads to a very similarly decorated room over here as well. Of course, it's not connected to the main room by a hallway, because one of the, one of the things the Romans didn't really build a lot of were hallways. So we have an exterior uh, colonnade, though, uh, that will uh, let you walk around your villa on the outside here. Just a, little ambly, uh, just a little ambulatory here for you to walk out to the front here and admire your formal gardens and uh, take a stroll around the inner courtyard here as well. So let us go uh, back inside and let's take a look at the uh, upper stories. And uh, one more potion. And you access those through these stairs here, which uh, bend around like that there. This is really the only place left to put those. So uh, up here we have uh, a couple of doors that are in the wrong positions. So we'll just uh, fix that right there. So we have a nice uh, parquet wooden flooring up here done with uh, oak and spruce. And just a plainer uh, decoration on the walls here. We still have uh, quartz panels and uh, red nether brick and uh, the new the, the uh, new deep slate tiles. And of course we have a uh, a wooden coffered ceiling up here as well, but it's less ornate than the rooms below there. But we do have a number of windows so where we can take a look outside. Some back here in the hallway, which uh, face towards our first courtyard. If we go through. These doors here, we have another medium-sized room here as well, and another uh, medium-sized or, sim or similarly-sized room behind that as well. And I think these would probably be used for things that you don't need too often, like if you want a, uh, a deep uh, storage system or a cold storage system where you want to put a bunch of chests with blocks that you don't really use that often, you can come up here and uh, place those as well. Or there is uh, probably enough space up here if you wanted to put in perhaps a... A villager trading hall you could uh, put that up here as well or down below or whatever I will leave it to you to determine the exact uses of all of these rooms uh, but as I've, I've as I've said the the villa uh, the the villa here is symmetrical on both sides meaning that this wing is all identical to this wing over here so you have another large room another triclinium on the side here Another set of doors, another another uh, wing of rooms over here, and up there you have an identical set of rooms that we just took a look at. So there's quite a lot included in this villa, quite a number of rooms of various shapes and sizes for you to use. Of course, the, the grandest room is here in the center of your villa. It uses all of this expensive calcite and everything. Uh, but if you want to relax a little, we do have a nice back area, which I will show you right now, because there's still still things to see inside the villa. So, back here we have a nice courtyard. A big uh, plaza back here with a fountain for you to relax in. It's got some lapis in the bottom of it to make the water look uh, just a, an, an uh, extra pleasing shade of blue. Over here you you have a number of pools that you can relax in, two identical pools on either side, like so, for you to take a swim in to relax from your hard day of mining. Uh, behind that, we do have a, a little uh, classical pavilion over here, a little Corinthian pavilion. And on either side of that, we do have two uh, large uh, Acroterion statues made out of calcite, uh, serving as fountains to drop water into your pool here. As you see, and with the shaders here, we can also uh, just barely see that we have a reflection in the water, so this does also serve as a reflection pool. And on either side of that, we have a couple of formal gardens over here as well to mirror what we have 
at the front and as you can see uh, the entire back is completely symmetrical along the center line here as is the entire villa. Uh, as with uh, most Roman structures they would all have a central axis and a line of symmetry usually that they would have in their buildings and this building of course being a Roman building is no different. And uh, back here as well we do have a little back entrance that you can go in and out if you want to approach your villa from the back as well. And there are a couple of fire pots over here, but I have I have fire tick turned off, so I think that you probably can't use the nether rack that's close to the tree. You will need to most likely replace this with a campfire, I think. But let's get a bird's eye view of the entire villa, so you can take it all in. Of course, I've given you the full tour of the interior. So here from a good height is, at a glance, the entire back area. As you can see, it's uh, two pools and a central plaza and some gardens surrounded by a colonnade on all sides. Back here as well, your main villa structure with two wings on either side, your central courtyard here with its formal gardens, and of course the, uh, the formal gardens with the Roman statues in front of those. Uh, and also, as an aside, before I get started, the the roof here, if you want to replace the uh, the red nether brick and the deep slate tiles, if you would uh, um, like to upgrade your villa just a little bit, you can perhaps add a copper roof onto your villa. If you do, I would recommend either going with shade one or two of copper and freeze that with wax, or go with the, the green here with the shades three and four and mix that together over your villa as well. It would look, uh, it would still look pretty good, I think, with either one of those, as with uh, the default one with the roof colors that I will be showing you here today. Uh, but I just want to mention that as an aside for some of you that want to uh, do something with the, uh, the new copper textures. All right. Now that the, the long-winded tour is out of the way, it's, it's quite a big structure, so that took a little while, uh, let us now take a look at the bill of materials you are going to need to construct this uh, fine ancient Roman edifice. So you will be needing 10,605 blocks of diorite. We use quite a lot of that. 1,866 blocks of calcite. I don't know how many geodes that is. It, it's quite a few. Uh, 5,468 blocks of grass or dirt that, that later turns into grass for your formal gardens. Uh, 44,962 blocks of cobblestone. Uh, but I use quite a lot of cobblestone with uh, filling everything solid, like the platform under the house is solid, and the, the roof uh, sections up there, that is all solid cobblestone. I think if as we go, if you leave some sections hollow, uh, you may be able to get away with perhaps perhaps 35,000 cobblestone, some, something around that, so it's not uh, too bad for you to collect. But, you know, cobblestone is like the most uh, abundant material in Minecraft, so I tend to use a lot of it. Uh, you will need 948 oak planks, uh, 452 spruce planks, uh, tons of water for those pools at the back that you saw, 2,066 oak tree trunks, 224 oak bark blocks, uh, 2,736 jungle leaves. The jungle leaves are used primarily for these little bushes right here and also for all of the trees. And the shrubs down at the lowest level, they are all done with oak leaves and you will need 3,258 of those. Now for the leaf choice, if you want, you can use whichever kind of leaf you want. Just use to, just use two different types of leaf uh, blocks is what I'm saying here. Uh, you also need 88 blocks of lapis for that little detail I mentioned under the fountain at the back. 24 regular stone slabs, 1,960 cobblestone slabs, 230 stone brick slabs, 2,250 uh, 2, deep slate tile slabs, 70, uh, 79 nether quartz slabs, lots of torches, two diamond blocks, 638 cobblestone stairs, uh, 1,374 blocks of netherrack. Uh, we are using netherrack for the, uh, the formal gardens here. We're using that as mulch in between the uh, hedgerows. 
down there for decoration. That's what uh, all that is for. Uh, two blocks of glowstone. For your windows, you will be needing 280 blocks of light blue stained glass and 248 blocks of light blue stained glass panes. Uh, for all of the, the, the uh, ferns that I showed you, all the potted plants and everything, you'll need 240 trap doors for all of those. 2,390 blocks of stone bricks. 2,872 stone brick stairs. Brick with a brick with a K. I misspelled that one. Anyway, uh, 1,209 deep slate tiles, 36 deep slate tile stairs. I believe the stairs on this are only used for the soldier, the Roman soldier statues here. As we go, 906 oak slabs, 358 cobblestone walls, 748 blocks of quartz ore. 2,002 blocks of solid quartz, 268 chiseled quartz, 882 quartz pillars, 1,521 quartz stairs, 408 prismarine bricks, 446 dark prismarine, 66 large ferns, uh, 26 dark oak doors, uh, for the roof and also for the uh, interior spaces, you'll be needing 4,944 blocks of red nether brick. Uh, this number will be different if you choose to use the, the, the copper blocks for the roof. You can probably divide that in two if you're going to do, to do that, I think. Uh, 538 gray glazed terracotta for our mosaic floors. 1,538 blocks of blue glazed terracotta. I think this is my favorite. Glazed terracotta block, actually. A 312 green glazed terracotta. And lastly, 856 blocks of black glazed terracotta. Uh, I know this is a really long list. There's a lot of materials. Uh, some of them are quite expensive, like uh, the calcite and things like that. Uh, but I will also be putting this entire list in the video description, like if, if you click on the video description and go all the way to the bottom, you will find an entire list of all of this written out for you, so you, you don't have to write it all down yourself. I'm, I'm going to do that for this one, since it is uh, quite a big list. Um, but with all of that said, I think we can now finally get into the tutorial itself. So we have quite a number of phases to get through. I think this is probably going to be a two-parter. So, for the foundation, the dimensions of your Roman villa are as follows. It is 95 blocks wide, that way, 211 blocks long, back that way, and 40 blocks tall. Now, the 40 blocks, this, this is measured from, I should go over here and show you this. This is measured directly from the lowest portions of the pool uh, down here. Uh, at, at the level of this uh, blue glazed terracotta. From that block there to the top of this uh, decorative finale up here on the side, right there, that is going to be the height dimensions of the building. So, so some sections are sunk below the ground a little bit, so I have accounted for that in this. So as I've said, to start off with, I recommend that you make a big cobblestone rectangle of 95 by 211. That's the very first thing you should do to measure out everything. Uh, everything in the villa will fit inside of this except for one thing here on the sides. The front and the back fit in that, but there is an extra block. Uh, the, the pediment on for the, uh, the Corinthian pavilions uh, that are in front of your pools and everything, they overhang the uh, side of this by one block there. So I, I don't think that will matter if you're just building this, you know, somewhere in somewhere in the overworld. Um, but I wanted to point that out so that doesn't confuse you when we get to it. But for your foundation, you want to lay out a rectangle of 95 by 211. Once you have done that, we need to establish where our center line is. This is a good Roman building. We have to have a center line. So if you count from this block here, if you count 48 blocks, you will get to this point 
right here. This is the very center line of your building. And uh, from, from this one over here, from this point over here to the corner over there, that should be 47 blocks. So, uh, now for this, um, how do I explain? Uh, the Roman villa is symmetrical along the center line. As with many of my builds, I, I tend to do this. Um, what is on the right side of the center line over here? If you draw the center line, you mirror everything that I'm going to show you on the uh, the left side of that. So as we go along, if we build something like uh, this on that side of the center line, we want to go over here and exactly mirror it along that side of the center line over there. So as we go through the tutorial, I will be focusing on probably the left half of the building over here but recognize that you should be building everything a second time mirrored on the other side of this center line. And also as we go the tutorial is divided out into uh, various phases. So as we go along uh, each phase that I'm going to show you here a slice of the building is two blocks taller than the previous slice except for the first one uh, because of the, uh, the, the pools are dug down a little bit uh, but but as we go after that, they're all going to be two blocks taller, so uh, bear that in mind as we go. Uh, and in, in this way, we will be 3D printing the structure from the bottom up. That is the general way that I do these tutorials. As you can tell, there are far too many blocks for me to do this in real time. That video would be like, I don't know, 50 hours long, and uh, I, I can't even record it. So we're going to compromise and do this format here, which most people can follow. Uh, but, but if you can't, this entire world I'm showing you here is available for download in the video description. So if you want to, you can come here and just take a schematic of this building out of the world and put it in uh, Lightmatica or something like that. However you choose to do that, of course if you're on Bedrock, you will need to use uh, MCC Tool Chest to convert it to Bedrock first. All right. So uh, now that all of the, the tour and the materials and the long-winded explanation is out of the way, we can, we can get started with the, the actual building. So I think the first thing, we will of course start at the front. And as we go, I'm going to be using the half slabs here as a pointing device uh, to help you, you count things out. So, so as we go, I'll be placing the, these half slabs directly on top of the block that you will need to be placing. But the, the block that you will place is already, it is pre-placed directly below the half slab. Okay. So now that that is out of the way, let us take a look at the uh, main roadway that leads into your uh, villa. And the, the length of this, so from this point here to this point right back here, this is going to be 47 blocks. And uh, you cut it short just a little bit with the die right here, but inside of that you want to make this little ring of cobblestone and uh, decorate out the corners. Just take a notch out of the corners like you see on the sides there. And uh, build that like that is there. And the entire width of this is, uh, what was that going to be? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. 11 blocks wide by, I believe, uh, 47. Uh, to either side of that, we, of course, have the formal gardens. And we are going to be laying those down with the nether rag, which we're using as a garden mulch, because it looks quite pretty as garden mulch, I think. Uh, it, um, the, uh, the, the red and green, red and green are complementary colors, by the way, is one of the reasons I, I use this, because it looks quite nice paired with each other. Um, so for this to lay out your first line of uh, nether rack, I believe I already wrote the dimensions for that. So that is 39 by 39. You want to make a square of nether rack, 39 by 39, and it should fit with one block of uh, grass border around the sides as you see done here. And as we go, do feel free to pause the video and replicate the block patterns that you see on your screen. This is what the tutorial is designed to do, for you to pause and to build visually at your own pace. 
All right, so once you have done that, you then want to come into the middle here and establish these uh, these two rings of, a, of a netherrack in here. And let me uh, count this out for you. So we'll, we will take a diagonal from that. So we will count one, two, three, four, five. And on the this fifth block here, you know, some red wool here, um, right here where this dirt block is, this is where we're going to be placing the first tree trunks. I believe these are just uh, oaks uh, tree trunks. And we'll, we'll see those later. But you probably want to place those there. And then we will keep counting three more blocks. And then I think you can see now how to place the nether rack from that. This is two more blocks again. And another thing of nether rack here. And two more blocks and th these uh, squares in here these are the foundations for the Roman soldier statues standing on their little uh, uh, pediment uh, here well, I guess it's a plinth not a pediment as you see done there so let me just give you a good look at this from the, the top down there and let me count out some of this for you here. So the this from here is going to be about one, two, three, seventeen blocks, and this one is going to be uh, less than that. One, two, three, eleven blocks. So there are the width of those, as you can see from there, and I think that is a very simple pattern. So you want to, of course, mirror that on the other side of your center line over there. And that is going to be the first section of your formal gardens. And behind that, you then want to come in and put in another rectangle of nether rack of 20 by 5, as you see done here. And we also have spaces for the trees right here with, uh, with that red wool there. And of course, uh, we're going to have trees at all the four corners of these over here as well. Like you see done there all right so take your time on this and get the, all the measurements correct because everything we're doing right now is quite literally foundational so we don't want to have our numbers off so once you have counted that two or three times uh, we will then skip all the way to the back and start building back there so every, all all of this uh, dirt right here in the middle this uh, you don't have to build all that just just level it out and uh, that is going to be uh, the the uh, foundations for the villa are going to be built next on top of that. And that's uh, that phase is going to take quite a while to work through. Uh, but uh, let us keep going with this one. So back here, let me just show you all this bird's eye view from the top down. As you can see, we have our our main plaza with our fountain and uh, four formal gardens and two large pools of water. Uh, so measurements for this. So if you extend your center line through through the building, it will be poking out the other side through here. This is our center line again. Remember, it's uh, it's on block 48 from the corner over there. If you count from the corner all the way over here, you just count 48 blocks, and this is your center line. All right, and back from that, we then want to count uh, what? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine blocks. And then we want to build this plaza here. And I really didn't count out the dimensions of that. I didn't count out the dimensions because I thought that um, it was going to be fairly self-explanatory. But let me count out the, the full width of this for you. So the full width is going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 10, 19 blocks from there on on either side like like so and behind that you then want to build in this simple pattern of just a sheet of cobblestone and then these details of diorite uh, just uh, put into them and I think these blocks are very high contrast enough that I don't have to go out and and trace these around they're just simple rectangle shapes with the corners cut out of them you see in the middle here we do have our uh, fountain and if you remember, I put uh, I put lapis in the bottom of this to make the water look a more deep and rich shade of royal blue. 
And of course, uh, the uh, the plaza is symmetrical on either side of the fountain, by the way. So, so once you build uh, this part over here, you just build that again on the other side over there, like so. All right, so once you have built the central part, we now want to extend to the pool on the sides here, as well as the sections for the formal garden. So for these, uh, you already have this, so you just want to go from here and fill in with grass all the way over to, uh, to here. Didn't I mark that out? Yes. Uh, so I should have said this where we started. The, do you see these, these red wool blocks here? That one over there, this one here, that one there, and this one here? This marks out a big rectangle. It marks out a rectangle of 75 by 67. The entire section that I'm showing you right now, it fits inside of this, 75 uh, by 67. It's 75 uh, across the width, back this way, and 67 blocks back that way. So I wanted to give you that measurement so everything could be clear. And uh, on the inside here, we then want to start filling out these formal gardens, and I should give you a measurement for that. So you already know what this point right here is. So we will count from here. One, two, three. Twenty-eight blocks to get to that point right there for the entire width of the, the uh, formal garden at the back here. And you just want to make, again, the pattern with the nether rack, as you see done here. And we are going to have trees back here as well that will sit at this point here, uh, that point there, and these two points over here. All right. So once you have built one of those, you want to build another one exactly the same on the other end, just like you see done here. All right, and in between that, you then want to just pretty much lay out a sheet of cobblestone and then make out this outline of diorite like you see done here. And then we're going to be placing the pool. Uh, now, for the floor of the pool, we have a nice uh, luxurious pool down here made out of a little decorative ring of uh, diorite here and also the blue glazed terracotta. Uh, as an upgrade for some sections, if you have, if you just really like mining calcite, you can change out the, the uh, ring of all of the, the diorite inside the pool to also be calcite. It would just make your villa a little bit uh, more luxurious, but uh, it, it, you can stick with diorite if you don't want to find however many geos that would take. Um, I think I should probably probably give you some measurements for these. So let's take uh, this measurement here. It's going to be one, two, three. 13 blocks, then uh, two, 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 and then one here, and a long run of one, two, three. Twenty-seven blocks uh, there. Of course, all the corners of this are exactly the same, and I think uh, you can see how to do... Um, the, the glazed terracotta and the ring at the bottom, like you see here. It's just a mirror of the pattern around the pool. You just want to follow the edges and lay it all down like so. Now, you don't have to use this, this exact pattern of blue glazed terracotta. You can do a bit of a different pattern. I think uh, this one may have a... well, we can't see it. Um, uh, but depending on how you arrange these blocks, uh, a glazed terracotta, it has four different patterns that you can make. Uh, some look better than others, um, but it's mostly going to be under the water anyway, so you're not really going to see it unless you dive down here anyway. And in the middle here, I think uh, you've already placed everything for your fountain as well, uh, but if you don't want to spend the, the lapis on this, you can substitute this material here for uh, more blue glazed terracotta. I think that was, what, 88 blocks? I don't remember how many. It, it was several. Um, but uh, I don't think that's uh, too much lapis to use inside the building. 
So let me show you all of this again from the top down at the back here. So at this point, your back garden uh, here should look something like that. And we already talked about everything at the front. So I think we can uh, at last move on to phase two. And phase two is also very, very foundational. There's quite a lot to talk about in this one. And indeed the, the phase after that one as well. But once we have, once we get past phase three, things should go uh, quite quickly. Um, so for this, let us start again here at the front. And uh, let's take a view from the top down of your formal garden that you're going to be building. Uh, you can use the red netherrack that we laboriously placed in the first phase as a guide to place all of these hedges, actually. So let me zoom in on just the corner of this from the top down there. So uh, in the middle here, you can see those trees that I, that I talked about there. Uh, along the side here, we do have a small garden wall made out of uh, just cobblestone, cobblestone half slabs and cobblestone walls arranged in a one to three ratio, except for the corner there, along the pathways. So on top of the, um, the, the, uh, the cobblestone that you built down there for the foundation, you then want to uh, put on top of that these little garden walls here, just to keep things from uh, wandering all over your gardens. We need to try and Keep the mobs either either in that or out of it. Um, let's take a look at the side over here. So for these, you will want to come around and start laying in the oak leaves or whichever type of leaf block you had around uh, these these corners here, and I believe it's double thickness on the inside here, like that like that here. So you're going to be placing those hedges like uh, like this here. They're just simple simple uh, cross-shaped hedges like that stacked two blocks right on top of each other. I know the leaves are a little shaggy so it might be might be a little hard to see. So let me just uh, let me just break those and rebuild them like that there and I'm uh, gonna have a block on top of it. I think as well for those, and you want to space those out from each other by what five blocks there, and then another five and build another hedge, another five, another hedge, and another five, and then you get to the corner, and then you just continue the entire thing around again like that there. And on the inside here, of course, you can use another rack as a guide to place your hedges according to this pattern here. On the inside here, we are building the plinth for the statues. I will cover a little bit of the, the plinth. Uh, but once we do that, the statue themselves, just this Roman statue as, long, as well as there's this eagle statue here, uh, both of these have their own individual tutorial videos. So when we get to those to save time in what is already going to be a long series, uh, I will refer you to those, those videos uh, instead. Um, so over here, you just want to make make this, I think that's what, 7 by 7 like you see done there with uh, first a layer of stone bricks on the outside and then a layer of cobble and then there's diorite fill back here but you can probably leave that hollow I think to save a, save a little bit of materials like you see done there and of course you want to mirror the entire thing that you've done on the other side of your pathway like that there and here's a close-up view of the very simple hedges and everything we have for uh, this this uh, garden bed right here all right so uh, now that we have done that let us move up into the villa itself so this villa it is it has raised up the foundations on uh, two blocks we have first a foundational layer of stone bricks and then a layer of cobblestone on top of that and then underneath the porch area, it is made out of a diorite, as you see done here. So we are going to be placing our fine mosaic floors in fairly short order. First, let's talk about the, uh, the foundations for the little triumphal archway. 
that leads to your inner courtyard. So we have here some of the first of many. Uh, I think there were 66 of these for the these are these are planters for the the, the uh, double tall ferns that I had you collect of those and you want to place those here with just a block of grass in uh, the middle there and I think uh, you can use uh, this pattern as the guide I think there was a little bit uh, extra cobblestone underneath this but you can use what you've already built to get to here following your following your center line following your center line like you see done there of course we have just five blocks of uh, cobblestone slabs here and then a full cobblestone and then just a three by uh, quite a few I'll measure that out in a moment uh, die right behind that and then we have on the sides here a three by what one two three four five six seven by that there uh, now I did not include it in, in this particular building but if you want to at at this point right here on either side of this if you want to build in an obsidian frame you can turn the the entrance a uh, triumphal archway into a roman nether portal uh, i already have a separate tutorial on how to do that as well by the way uh, but this would be a, a good place for your nether portal if you want to have one uh, I, I left it out of the reference model uh, but I want to mention it at uh, it right now, in case if you, if you want to start uh, adding that, you'll have to collect uh, however many blocks of obsidian that is going to be. Uh, now let's take a measurement again from I think this point here. So if we want to follow our center line, I need, I need to tell you how long this is. I didn't pre-measure it, so it's going to be one, two, three. Thirty-eight blocks to get to that point back here, which is going to be the uh, the stair that will lead up into your villa. All right. So let me show you now the uh, the uh, the gardens in the courtyard from the top down. Of course, we're doing them exactly the same as we have for the front section. They're just a little bit smaller, uh, but uh, the edges, as you see along here, you can use your pathway that you have now laid out as a guide. And underneath this, there is a, there, there's more grass. Every time you place a hedge, there's going to be grass underneath the hedge. And there's going to be then a hedge, a row of um, netherrack as mulch, and then a, a two-block thick hedge. And then two blocks of grass. And then a one block of oak leaves, a ring of netherrack, and uh, a new block of oak, uh, oak leaves, and then just uh, central grass and the middle like that there until you get something approximating this pattern right here and uh, at, at the corners of these there are those those uh hedges that i talked about earlier just just like we built down there you want to build those hedges like that on all of the four corners here of this uh, formal garden bed uh, up here by the house, we do have a little cutout here as well for a couple of trees that you see that we are going to be planting. And let me start giving you measurements for that. So if we take a measurement from here, you already know how to get to that. So from here, this is along our center line, by the way. Our center line right there. We want to measure out 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 blocks turn go four blocks and then measure out one two three nineteen blocks and from that one i think uh, let's just take the measurement let's go from here we want to measure out one two three three Thirty-eight blocks to get to that point right there, and then just make a straight run until you collide with your your gateway. 
right there. And in between that, we are going to have uh, some uh, pillars sitting on the uh, three block wide uh, walkway of diorite, as you see done here. And uh, to get uh, this shape back here, this this just uh, this corresponds to what we did over here. You just want to start filling that in with first a layer of stone bricks, and then a sheet of cobble, and start placing in diorite as you see here. And the diorite for this is going to be five blocks wide. For that, of course, there was cobble along the front here, and over here, I believe it is going to be well, what six blocks and width for that as well. All right, so let me just show you all that from the top down over here on the side that we didn't do anything on. And over here we can, I think we may as well start placing in some of the, the glazed terracotta for the floor. So for the floor, let me give you an accurate count from that. Let's take uh, so let's take this block right here and count one, two, three, twelve blocks, and then turn and count three blocks, and that will give you this block here, which will be the corner of our first room on the wing of our pavilion. And you want to build in the pattern of the green and the gray and the gray glazed terracotta as you see done here. I think this pattern is high contrast enough that I don't need to uh, directly do it. And we do have a little block of wood down here where our doorway is going to be as well. All right, so once you have built this out, you then want to skip a block as you see here, and build out this pattern that I'm showing you here with, of course, the green and the gray glazed terracotta. Our door is in a slightly different place in the room, right there, so we have a little uh, cutout for that, as you see done there. All right, and uh, we can use that to help us lead into the next section. Which is, just, is, which is just this little hallway here. Uh, if you remember, our stairs, which lead up to our second story, are going to be over here. So our, our uh, stairwell is in this section of the building. We're going to have two of those. And you want to build this little hallway right here. That is, of course, uh, four blocks. We have a quartz threshold on either end of that because we're entering into the, the very nice rooms. So we're transitioning to quartz thresholds instead of just by plain wood. And then after that, we have, of course, uh, the uh, mosaic floor for the triclinium or the dining room, uh, as it be. Depending on whatever use you want to have for this particular room on the side here. And I think all this is fairly, fairly high, uh, high, uh, high contrast enough, but I should uh, give you a measurement for the entire width of the room. So from, I think, uh, what, this block right here is going to be one, two, three, twenty-three blocks in width for the entire section of the mosaic floor for the room. And uh, how far is it across? Gonna be what? One, two, three. One, two, three, four, five, six. Twelve blocks across. So over here, and um, uh, mostly in the center, you want to make a, another th uh, another threshold out of quartz, and like you see done here, from from the side. That is going to be one, two, three, four, five, six blocks right there so take your time and uh, get all the measurements correct it's going to be really easy to get off on uh, probably by one block when you're doing and laying out all of the rooms here so take it slow and then we can build the mosaic floor for 
this large room here. Um, now, the, the mosaic pattern for this floor, you don't have to copy this one as I have exactly done it. Uh, uh, there, there is a different pattern over here as well that you uh, may choose to use. Uh, and also for completeness sake, I, I want to show you the other two patterns over here as well. So uh, this one right here, this is my preferred, my preferred pattern for this room. I, I quite like it with how the, the red and the blue uh, interlace with each other. It makes a, a, a nice pleasing shape. Uh, and, and the last one over here, you could try uh, this one also, if you perhaps prefer that one a little bit more. Uh, but uh, th these change depending on how I copy, paste, and rotate the buildings anyway. Um, but I wanted to uh, just give you a glance at those. Uh, but we have, uh, for it's, it's sort of a, a checkerboard pattern, but we are doing it with, uh, with two block with uh, two by two sections of that. So let me just uh, let me just give you a measurement all the way across this room. So this doorway, this is directly in line with this doorway here, which is going to be from here. It's going to be one, two, three. Twenty one blocks across. For that room there. And we have little cutouts on the sides here with the cobblestone because we're going to have uh, uh, attached pilasters on uh, the corners of the rooms there and we're going to have uh, three large windows in the middle there as well. Alright, with uh, that done we now have our large main room to lay out. I forget exactly what the Latin term for this one is. It's not the tablinium. It's it, it's it's something else. Um, but uh, anyway, so if we continue with our, our center line here, where we started, we have a wooden threshold here for our main doorway, and directly behind that we have a small entrance vestibule, like you see done here. And we are doing this with just a checkerboard pattern of black and blue glazed terracotta. Uh, these are these are faced in no particular direction, by the way. Um, if you want to have the, the terracotta facing in a particular direction all through, you can do that, or you can try and make a little pattern out of this as we go. Uh, but I, I, I threw these blocks down randomly. I did not try to give them a, a pattern like I did over here. Uh, and all the, the, uh, the dining room also, it's, it's mostly... Uh, laid down in uh, in fairly straight lines of uh, glazed terracotta anyway, but I did not put uh, conscious effort into trying to make a pattern out of those as well. So, here from the top down, I think, uh, I think you can uh, visually see how to lay these out. They're all uh, uh, very high contrast between this and the cobblestone. And behind that, you just then want to just put in a solid floor of alternating squares of blue and black glazed terracotta all the way across until we get to the back. And the back, this is a, this is a mirror of what you did at the front. It's just going to be at the back here. And I should give you a measurement across the entire room from threshold to threshold. So the wood block here, we'll count that as block number one. And then we will count one, two, three... Thirty-three blocks to get to the other wooden threshold on the other end. So your room is thirty-three blocks across, as you see done here. And once you have done that, of course, your room on the other side here is an exact copy of what is on the other side of the center line, as is the triclinium on the sides here, and your uh, small little bedrooms on the sides over here as well. All right. That took quite a while. I think I have uh, described to you in in a reasonable amount of detail that will let you reconstruct uh, this section of the villa, which is, of course, extremely foundational 
So let's um, give you the measurement across here. It's one, two, three, four, five, six for the diorite for the main porch. And then one, two, three, four, five for the sections behind that there. All right. Now that is done, we can move into the, the back section again with the pool and everything. So this has a kind of a split level design. We have a, a higher section and a sunken lower section. And of course the pools are indeed very sunken. Um, where should we start for this? Let's start at, at the back in the middle again. So, our, our trusty old center line is right there. And on either side of that, we want to put in some stairs, like you see down here, first five and then three. And if we extend our center line over here, we have a couple and then three blocks of diorite. And then a block of cobble, then a cobblestone half slab, a, another full block of cobble, another half slab, and another uh, full block down here. Well, you've already built this. Um, I think if I, before I do this, let me just give you the good top-down views for those of you that can build directly off of that. So you can use the plaza and the pools that you have already made as a guide to help you construct this. We do have uh, two little uh, uh, potted plants. On either side over there, we have, of course, the little um, ne the netherrack braziers here, which if you have fire tick on, I suggest you that you replace that with a, a, a campfire. And on the side here, let me just give you a top-down view of the pattern to place the oak leaves in, uh, like you see done here as they uh, wander around in the breeze with the, the shaders and everything. I quite like how that's done with all the bushy leaves. I wish that was uh, in default Minecraft. Maybe one day it will be. Um, but on the sides, you can see that we are placing some more trees as well. And you can use the nether rack that we placed down in the first phase as a guide to help you place those here. And of course, we have just a little, a little uh, baroque detail in the middle here of an, a, 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 an oval. Uh, because we didn't have enough blocks, we had, I think it was, what, four, then one, and then five for that there. All right, so on the sides here, we then want to start building up. Um, on the outside, I didn't, I didn't really talk about that. We're building up the foundation of stone bricks and then a layer of cobble, as you see here. And behind that, we have uh, details for the diorite, as you see on the sides here, I think I don't think I need to describe that. It's fairly self-explanatory. It's just three blocks diagonal from the corner there, and then you can start placing it like that there with one block of diorite, one block of cobble, then two diorite, one cobble, one diorite again, and one cobble to make the very simple alternating pattern like you see done there, and just bend that around to the side here. Now we do have a little um, podium. Over here for our um, uh, classical pavilion in front of our pool. And we have some stairs over here as well to let you get uh, up and down around that there. So I'll just give you a good view of this. And uh, I think it's fairly easy to count out. You can, you can see, um, uh, you can use the guide for how you have already built the pool to build this here. We just have another staircase with a couple of blocks on either side of that. And uh, the good news is once you have built that over here, you mirror all of that on the other side over here. I think only only uh, this section along here is just uh, one block wider than it is over there. So I'll show you that from the top down. All of that there. And over here, there is a cutout for the diorite for the, uh, the porch sections as well. And I think in general, the walls of the, the, the villa are about three blocks thick in most places. Like you see done along there. 
Uh, and at the central section here, we just have a very simple staircase. Going up like that here with just a couple of potted ferns on either side there. And for the braziers, we just have upside down stone bricks and underneath that we have uh, cobblestone walls and just a block of cobble. All right. Uh, the fountain, right. So all the way around the lapis, we then want to place um, a ring of cobblestone, uh, like you see done here, just in a, uh, just uh, let me count this out for you. It's going to be three, two, one, two, and then three, and two, one, two, and then three to make that ring there. And I think once you have done all of that for however long this took you to build, uh, phase two will be complete. So what you have at this point should look something like this here we had to spend quite a lot of time as i've said these uh these first couple of phases are quite literally foundational so we have to measure everything out and get to those as we are able all right i think that i can do another phase and this is obviously going to be a multi-part video i think uh possibly two parts but more likely three we'll have to see it is quite a large building um, let's talk about these trees. So, for all the places that you have been placing the, the wood over here, like so, we want to make that three blocks tall in total, and then we're going to be building this tree shape here. And I replaced the leaf blocks with these, uh, these, uh, joined double half slabs for you to see them, uh, quite clearly because to save a bit of time, I'm not going to show you how to build these trees because they're just very symmetrical, regular patterns. And, and absolutely every tree in this building, and they're all copies of this reference model of tree here. So just replace um, the blocks here with uh, jungle leaves or whichever block of leaf you chose to use for your trees. And uh, that will be your tree design. Uh, veterans in my tutorials will already know how to build those since I uh, tend to use those to represent the pointy Roman cypress trees. Over here for these, for the all the bushes that you added, just go around and place one more, one more leaf block on top of all those until you have uh, got something resembling that there. And here's a bit more detail for the plant, for the statues. All right, I think um, the only thing we will continue to talk about is the plant. But the front section of the formal gardens, if you go ahead and build those trees that I talked about, uh, these will be complete, as is the, the pathway and everything. Uh, so from this point onwards, we, we will be focusing in only on the main villa and the back gardens, and then lastly, only the villa. Uh, let's take a look at the triumphal entranceway here. So you want to build that out according to this pattern here. We do have, we're going to be placing a whole lot of these uh, planters here for the double tall ferns that I had you collect, 66 of those. And uh, each one of these, these are uh, bases for the, the columns. So we're gonna be building, we're gonna be building columns on top of those like you, like you see over there, like we did, like we saw in the tour. And in general, although not, not every place, the intercolumnation distance that is, the distance columns are apart from each other, is going to be three blocks. There are going to be some places where that is not true, and I will try and point that out to you. Over here, um, uh, the other side of the, the triumphal entranceway, like so. I believe you've already done the formal gardens in here. You're just uh, placing another block on top of the uh, plants in here to finish those off. So let me just show you from the top down here. You're going to be placing, uh, skipping three blocks, placing a planter here, then a column base, and then a planter, and then another column base. And do that for five column bases, spaced three blocks apart. For the front, you want to space it three blocks forward, place another column base, skip 
two blocks, two blocks, and place a, a column base, three in the middle, and then two there. Behind that, against the wall, uh, more planters. Now, as we go for the foundation level of this, we want to have stone bricks right here, and then cobblestone layered above that. So, for you've already built this floor, so I think if I just give you a top-down view, you can see what you're going to be doing uh, with that here. So let me just uh, give you from the inside here, we have uh, baseboards uh, made out of a calcite and quartz along the sides here with the prismarine bricks. These are in general laid out in three block panels, as you see done here. Around the room, for that here, where the stairs are, the, these are going to be windows. And detail on the doorway here. And we have um, uh, some plasters on the outside here as well. Uh, these uh, these these uh, blocks here. So on the inside, we want to lay out the um, bases for the pillars, three blocks apart. Every other one of those has a uh, planter. like you see done here. Get to the corner, turn 90 degrees and build them again, spaced uh, three blocks out again with three planters. And at the front here, you can use what you've already built as a guide. Our center line is right here. These are spaced three blocks apart and on either side they're spaced two blocks apart like you see done here. All right. Uh, let me go back over here and give you a view along the exterior. So for this, this is uh, four blocks. Skip five blocks and build three. Then five five, and then three, five, and then three. Keep doing that all the way along until you get to the back around here. And uh, once, you hit, uh, once you hit this corner of the die right here at the back, you will know when to stop. After you have done that, start laying down more column bases. This one is two blocks apart. But after that, it is three, then three and a planter, three, three and a planter, three, and then uh, it's, it drops down to one block spacing here because this is the foundation for your, your pavilion. And it has a what? It has 12 column bases arranged just in a simple square, like you see here, one block spacing on all of those. We continue along the side here, it's three, three and a planter, Three, three, and a planter, then three, and, and, and on the corner, back here, we, we kind of ran out of space. So it is two blocks, and then turn the corner, space, two blocks, and then three, and a planter, three, three, and a planter, three, three, and a planter, and then one, one, and one. And back over here, this is, of course, where our center line is running through the back like you see done there, and we want to have, uh, what, eight column bases back here. All right, and along the front here, if you want to go ahead, you can uh, make this garden wall here. It's exactly the same pattern as we used at the front for our formal garden. We're just uh, using it uh, here as well, and it's uh, bent around on the cobble back there. And of course, uh, we're building trees back here as well again. And uh, you already know how to build those trees, so you can go ahead and put those up. And uh, since we're back here, let's take a look at the, the first level of 
these uh, these Acroterion back here we're going to be using as uh, as uh, fountains. And to do that, you just want to make a calcite out of that pattern there. And uh, it is uh, mirrored on the other side of that, by the way, like that. And a little detail over here for stairwell. And the uh, the guardrail around there for that. And I think for for this one, let's keep uh, talking about the exterior. So once we got to this point back here, we then want to build the back wall for the villa. And we're doing that with uh, five blocks of cobble, four diorite, one block of cobble, then four, and then uh, diorite and cobble back here. And we have uh, these pillars. These are going to be attached to the building. So we want to turn and go for four blocks there. And then another window frame of five, then one, five, one, five, one, and five. And as you can see, we have uh, uh, four planters in front of those as well. And along the front there, in front of those, uh, with a spacing of uh, three blocks, we have more column bases. Now over here, let me point out the center line. So this is how the uh, the front pediment and the vestibule behind that are constructed. Top down, and let me give you a closer in view, like you see done here. And a view from the inside. Uh, Let's return back to the front now and take a look at the inside from that as well. So it's the same exact as the back. Along the bottom, we're putting in our first layer of calcite. Over here, we are going to have, uh, we're going to have windows there. Along the front. And um, I don't think I gave you a good enough view of this. So here are the side chambers, two windows over there, our two, our double doors over there, and the back wall there. And then we have the detail back here for the hallway and the stairs. And we are building that out like this. We're using a bit of chisel quartz for decoration for this. And along the wall here. Um, let's work our way uh, over here. Now, uh, your your diamond throne, you can put that wherever you want to. I put it, it sits directly on the center line. I mean, no surprise there. Uh, but it does sit a couple of blocks uh, back, so it can be even in line with, with that there. Now, but if you have a different design for a throne chair or whatever, if you want to put it somewhere else, uh, please feel free to do that. I generally leave the decoration up to you. Now, here's a view of just the, the very simple dividing wall. These these match up with the quartz, uh, well, the, uh, the um, what is it, calcite thresholds that you see there. And they're divided out into uh, three block wide panels like you see here, and as is done in the first style of Roman decorative art. On the inside here, we have uh, the bases of pilasters, and in between those we have windows. They're just arranged with uh, quartz and quartz stairs, like you see done here. Another dividing wall. Uh, I think I could probably make that cobble. Nobody's going to see that. And a view back here. Now, now, what do you build here at the front? This is this is mirrored on the other side of this room directly, according to this pattern here. And we just have uh, one block wide dividing walls. Now, if I were to build this again, I'd probably make them two blocks. Uh, but that's okay. Uh, over here, for need to give you the, the detailed looks at the triclinium. 
So you can construct that. Uh, now for the outlines for the calcite along the floors here. Uh, you can use what we did at the last phase. Uh, you're just making an outline of that all the, all the way around the room. So all of these blocks should be quite easy for you to know the places of because we already talked about that at, at length. And uh, five panels of quartz along the side here and uh, two windows on the side here. These are smaller windows, only two blocks wide. Okay, so let me give you uh, top-down views of the entire sections that we have covered in this here of the back. Oh, I didn't talk about the fountain. Uh, and the, the fountain here, we just have a simple design for the bowl for the fountain here. And I think there may be, a, I don't remember if there's another block up here or not. I think there might be. Uh, but once you place another another block up there, you can go ahead and fill this in with uh, with water like that there. Or if you want to have your, your fountain a little bit lower down, you can do it like that there. Uh, let me go back to the front and give you the top-down view of that entire section. And now of the villa building itself. That section here. And once you have done all of that, you should have something resembling this monstrosity here. But I'm afraid that's all the time we're going to have for today. I think with just these three phases, you have more than enough work already cut out for you, as with the gathering of the materials themselves. But I hope you are excited to be building the Roman Villa. It's going to be a, quite a big build. And I want to thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time.